On Austin Faith Dialogue today, we talk about talking with each other and working with each other across faith boundaries. Stay with us for Austin Faith Dialogue. Austin Faith Dialogue, at the crossroads of religion and life. A series highlighting the cultural and social interactions between the worshiping and religious communities in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KXAN. Join us now in Austin Faith Dialogue. We're glad you've joined us today on Austin Faith Dialogue. I'm Sandy Wilder, your host, and today we're talking about what could be boundaries to communication and conversation, but aren't. Our faith boundaries, and we're talking about the work of the Interreligious Commission of Austin Metropolitan Ministries. And our guests are two members of that commission, also board members of Austin Metropolitan Ministries. Donna Howard from the Unitarian Universalist Church, and Kathy Solomon from Congregation Beth Israel. Good to have both of you. Thanks. Thank you. Let us not assume, though, that anybody even knows we've got an interreligious commission. So I think you, Kathy, have been on it for a while. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the work of the commission. Well, the interreligious commission um, is chaired by Father Don Sawyer, and he's been the chair for a number of years. The most um, well-known activity, I believe, would be the Thanksgiving service, the annual Thanksgiving service, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. We had our 15th annual service this past November, and it was a beautiful service. But the other um, areas of the Interreligious Commission include uh, Jewish-Christian dialogue, inter-Christian dialogue, inter-religious dialogue, and we are planning on adding an interreligious symposium, hopefully in the fall of 2000. I hope people mark their calendars as soon as they hear the date then. Well, I hope I'd, so I'd be interested in, in knowing from you then, Donna, mm -hmm. what is it about this kind of work that, that attracted you? Uh, and maybe along the way you can say a little something about the beliefs of the Unitarian Universalist Church and how they might have shaped your approach to this work. Well, I have to say that actually I started out in this life as a Baptist, uh, in, attending University Baptist Church here in Austin, which was a very inclusive Baptist Church. In fact, I remember growing up, uh, the minister at that time, Dr. Blake Smith, when he would have communion, would say it was the Lord's table, it's not his table, everyone is invited to come. So I grew up with that kind of an attitude. Uh, as an adult, uh, the man that I met and eventually married uh, was raised a Unitarian, and his father was a minister. So I visited that church with him and felt at home right away. Uh, the Unitarian Universalist Church is a very inclusive church also. Uh, because of that and uh, because of my spiritual journey within that faith tradition, uh, I have been drawn to other religions, to understanding them, to seeing what they have to say about the meaning of life that I can take and incorporate in my own spiritual definition for myself. Uh, but also, I've been extremely interested in how we can work together as a community, especially in the world nowadays with so much divisiveness and polarization among people. Um, the, anything we can do to come together, to talk with each other, find our common ground, I think, will make a big difference in what we can do to correct the problems that we face in this society. And I understand that the commission sponsors uh, dialogue sessions among people of a variety of faiths. Tell us what happens at these sessions and when they happen. Well, um, I've been involved with it. I guess this year has been our first year to really have the dialogue sessions. And we have, uh, it's a very informal, intimate kind of group, actually. Um, we have a different member of our group representing a different faith make a presentation each month. We meet once a month and uh, they give some information about their own particular faith tradition, but also their own personal spiritual journey. Uh, so we have a situation where we're all kind of just sitting around the table very informally, but with a lot of respect for one another, with our intent being to learn from each other, to, to find the things that, that, uh, that we can have in common with, it, with each other, but also respect our differences. There's, uh, there's no judgment, there is uh, no attempt to try to convert anyone. It's purely a situation to learn about the other traditions. 
So then, Kathy, why is this dialogue important if it's not leading to a conversion or whatever, which might be the, the goal of uh, some people of faith? Why is it important to even do this kind of dialogue? Well, I feel it's important because we need to understand each other before we can really reconcile any of our differences. And it's fascinating to me to see the openness to feel the openness of the members of this group because they're curious about other religions. They've not uh, been in situations where they can learn about other religions. We've had presentations by Hindu, um, Methodist, Episcopalian, Jewish. We've had a Quaker. We um, are anticipating uh, a member of the Islamic community pr making a presentation this month. and. Um, when I asked him to participate, I said, this group is a, a very um, open group. There will, will not be any questioning. There will only be um, a respectful conversation between us. And uh, I just wanted him to feel like that he was, it was a safe place to come. We all show great respect for one another. The questioning that occurs is really questioning to find out more about the religion itself or about how the person has experienced it and in no way do we ever have questions that are, are threatening. Uh, that's not the intent at all. I wonder then if, if each of you might speak a little bit about what changes you've seen in the members of the dialogue group over, over these months. Have you noticed greater understanding, greater confusion? What? I feel that there has been greater openness to other religions. I, I feel we have an age range there from, I would say, early 40s all the way into the 80s. We have people who, um, one of our members experienced Kristallnacht in Germany in 1938, and she is now a Quaker. And her presentation was absolutely beautiful. You know, you hear, um, you hear so much about other religions, it's almost like gossip. Is, is what I have come to understand at this point. Um, my own faith journey, I was raised as a Catholic and then I became involved with um, several Jewish people and then eventually met my husband who was also Jewish. And uh, I'd heard all these, what was Judaism about, this and that and the other, and I decided that I really needed to go to the source and find out for myself. Well, I was completely amazed at what, uh, interpretations I had learned and they were individual interpretations and of course we each have an individual interpretation of our own uh, religion but there are some facts that are not up to individual interpretation and um, you know I think that members of our group are are learning that as well we're all learning you know none of us uh, pretend to know everything so that's what's great yeah, I think that uh, one of the things that I have, have discovered is that those of us that are in the group, I think, have a certain sense of uh, security in our spiritual journey. It doesn't necessarily mean that we think we have the answer, mm -hmm. but we have a comfort that allows us to not be threatened or feel defensive about doing this. And the more we talk, uh, I think the more we see what we have in common, the more we have opened up to one another, as Kathy said, um, it, it, is, it actually turns out to be a group filled with a lot of respect. Now, if someone were interested in coming to a dialogue session, how might they find out about place and time and, and all that? Well, they could call Austin Metropolitan Ministries at 472-7627. They will have the dates of our um, scheduled meetings now our meetings are becoming a little more uh, irregular in April, May, and June because there's some conflicts. We have Passover in April. We have, in May, we have other things that are happening and, uh, or perhaps someone can't come on the day that we'd like for them to make a presentation. But if they would call the Austin Metropolitan Ministries office, they could find um, the date. But usually it's the third Thursday of every month at 1130 at Congregation Beth Israel. Okay. You, you mentioned a bit ago the word reconciliation. 
And I'm, I'm intrigued with that whole word in terms of how you get at reconciliation through talking about your faith. Donna, maybe you can talk a little bit about what you've seen happen in this group that might be described as reconciliation. Um, actually, I think that uh, I'm going to ask Kathy to respond to this because she's been active in a group specifically dealing with uh, reconciliation that I think would have some bearing on this. Well, in my life, I, I needed to reconcile a few things. And I was surprised that they were laid out in front of me. And um, one of those things has been this interreligious dialogue. As uh, I left Catholicism because I was disenchanted and hurt. And, you know, I, uh, I found Judaism and I found freedom but I still had issues to deal with. This group has helped me reconcile some of those different, those ideas that I had and interpretations that I had and has made me realize that everyone has their own experience. Um, another group that, that um, is a potential, uh, has the potential for reconciliation is the Mayor's Council for Community Reconciliation, which is a racial reconciliation group. But that group also has representation from many different faiths, and it's another opportunity, as well as working on racial reconciliation, is to get to know your neighbor, whether they be Jewish, Baptist, Christian, you know, whatever, a Hindu. It, it, it's, uh, it's all incorporated there. And you participate in that task force. Yes. And in the second half of the show, then we'll get to, to talking about that because I think we can do a bit more exploration on, on the whole notion of reconciliation, not only inside oneself, but reconciliation across faith lines, across racial lines, and whatever else might, might divide us. Um, one further thing, I don't know that we mentioned where the dialogue group meets. Did at we? Uh, Congregation, Congregation Beth Israel. Beth it's Israel. at 38th and right. Shoal Creek. Mm -hmm. Okay. And visitors are welcome to come then to the sessions. Do people need to call ahead for that? No, they're welcome to come. We have limited space. We may be able to, uh, well, you know, I'm sure we have plenty of room, the okay. room we're in. And right here before the break, uh, when does the commission itself meet? Because perhaps folks might be interested in the larger work of interreligious uh, dialogue. The commission meets only three to four times a year, and we'll have a meeting I believe we have one scheduled for this month sometime. We just, I don't know the date at this moment. But uh, the commission is the overall umbrella for the interreligious activities. And, um, and I mentioned those a little while ago. Right, the five major activities, That's including right. the Thanksgiving service, which is probably the most, the most public of those. That's right. Well, when we come back after the break here, then uh, let's continue talking about the importance of this work, not only for our lives and, and what we do in our congregations, but also for the whole community of Austin. So stay with us for the second half of Austin Faith Dialogue. We'll be right back. glad you're here for the second half of Austin Faith Dialogue when we're talking about interreligious dialogue. 
And our guests today are two members of the Austin Metropolitan Ministries Interreligious uh, Interfaith Commission. We have Donna Howard and Kathy Solomon. Good to have you both here. Thank you. And one question I wanted to get uh, back to in terms of this whole notion of reconciliation, let me address it uh, first to you, Donna, is how you see this interreligious work, this dialogue, now making a difference perhaps in your household or in your life within your particular congregation? Well, uh, in my particular congregation, one of the things that uh, we are actively pursuing right now is uh, whether or not to try to start another Unitarian Universalist church in the southern part of this uh, Austin area. And one of the things that we're interested in doing as we look into the possibilities is trying to, to determine how we can put into action our beliefs of acceptance of diversity. And uh, so we are attempting to not only look at the demographics and location and that sort of thing, but, but try to figure out how we can open up dialogue with people of different ethnic uh, backgrounds, uh, different socioeconomic groups, um, but who might want to come together and would feel comfortable expressing their religious beliefs in a Unitarian Universalist church. So um, that's one of the things I think that uh, this is addressing. The other thing is uh, we have tried through Austin Metropolitan Ministries to participate in a program where you are linked up with a sister church. Uh, our church was linked up with Holy Cross Catholic Church, uh, which is a primarily uh, African American church. And we have had a few, in the past years, we've had a few activities that we have shared together. Um, I think we kind of went through a lull, and I'm hopeful that some of the activities that are going on now in this community will, will revive some of that. But um, any of the uh, dialogue I think we can get started between ourselves will allow us to recognize the particular issues that face each of us. And perhaps in that recognition, we can have more of a concerted effort to work together for the things that will be of benefit to all of us so that we have more of a win-win situation instead of a confrontational one on some of the issues that we have to work on in this, uh, in this community. You keep saying we, so at, at this point it's not just you in your congregation pushing interreligious dialogue, correct? Well, that's correct. It's definitely uh, something that is very important, I think, to the majority of the people uh, in my congregation. And I think the people that I've met through this program, I would say that uh, they share that with the congregants of their own particular community. Well, we'll look forward to groundbreaking then for a new congregation in South Austin one of these days. And another thing to look forward to, I understand, is the possibility of an interreligious symposium in Austin later on this year. Mm -hmm. How are the plans beginning to shape that? Well, um, we have been talking about the symposium for at least a year, and we wanted the interreligious dialogue to progress and evolve. And I believe that we have come up with a, um, a format that we can use in a, on a larger scale. We do plan to have a speaker and have information booths available um, about certain faiths. It is not an up an opportunity for proselytizing. It will be a respectful environment and uh, and then we will have opportunities for individual dialogue, you know, where people can um, come together in a smaller group and have a similar experience like we're having. And uh, it's exciting when you learn about other people, I think, and you learn about other religions and you become comfortable with things that you previously had been uncomfortable with and you realize there's no threat and um, I think that's satisfying to most people. I think so. And I also hope that uh, my children understand what I'm doing and they do. They understand how important interreligious uh, activity is for me and I encourage um, interracial, interreligious and not I could no longer just encourage it. I had to participate and I had to jump in with both feet so I could really set the example that I was preaching. And I was frustrated with the lack of opportunity for me to do that in an organized way. 
and um, and I take my children with me to these events, you know, the Thanksgiving service and and other uh, opportunities that are available in Austin. And Kathy, you've also said yes to participating in a mayor's task force. Um, Talk yes. a little bit about what that group does. Well, I'm a relative newcomer to that group, so I, I can't speak with too much authority other than what has been my experience. I know the group began probably four years ago with a group of Christian ministers, white and black, and they um, came together uh, after some event, and they teamed up with churches, similar to what Donna is talking about with her congregation, and they developed a relationship. But these relationships don't just happen by getting together once a year, twice a year. They, you have ongoing opportunities to get together and get to know each other. We're all busy, and a good place to start is in your congregation. And um, because you go there for a respite, you go there to pray, you go to be with your, uh, your friends. And most of us look forward to new friendships. So what actually does the group do then? Does it have an agenda, a, a program of action? As such? Well, we're working on it, and I, I really am not in a position to give much more information other than it's exciting, and we have a broad spectrum of people involved and committed, uh, wonderful people. I, I have been completely moved by the experience and hopeful. Uh, we live in a society that can, you can polarize, be polarized. You can isolate yourself. You can be afraid because you hear so much bad news. It has encouraged me that, you know, I, I think there's a lot of hope in our, our city, and I think we're very lucky to live here and have the mayor that we have and have the community leaders that we have. Well, it does speak well of the city of Austin, that both the interreligious group and um, the political system. I think it's important for us to be talking with each other. I wonder if either of you has a sense of what other communities, say, in, in Texas are doing in terms of interreligious or, or interfaith work. Are we unique here in Austin? No. Uh, San, I mean, not San Antonio. Uh, San Antonio might, but I do know that Dallas and Houston have interfaith groups that are very active and much larger than ours and have been um, active for years and years. And uh, we are very connected to congregations. We have congregational memberships and those memberships support Austin Metropolitan Ministries. And, um, and I, I understand that, that most of our fundraising comes not from grants although we do are the recipients of some grants, but it is through the congregations and individual events. And Austin Metropolitan Ministries isn't necessarily in the spotlight. They do a lot of behind the scenes and are very active in many, uh, many areas. Hands-on housing is one of them. And right. Community mentoring, that's an interesting project. It's fascinating. And we have done a number of things on Austin Faith Dialogue about all these ministries of Austin Metropolitan Ministries, truly a good organization. Mm -hmm. If you were, Donna, to mm -hmm. think down the road a bit, what would you like to see happening in Austin in, in terms of this whole interfaith, interreligious dialogue? What, what changes would you want to see going on in Austin? Well, I think uh, the main thing for me would have to do with uh, with our coming together more to work on the problems that, that we're facing. Um, I think that there's been, obviously we've been uh, moving toward more of a faith-based response to the social ills that we face. Um, our government has uh, actually been saying that a lot of these efforts need to be moved to the faith-based community. and. And uh, we have been responding as best we can. Uh, I think the government still needs to have some involvement here because we can only do so much. But obviously, the more we talk with each other, the more we work together, the greater the impact can be. And I think some of the programs that Austin Metropolitan Ministries is involved with is a, a good example of that, the hands-on housing. You have people from a variety of faiths coming together for the common purpose of helping to deal with a, a, an issue here. Um, 
one of the groups I was thinking about uh, while Kathy was talking a moment ago is the, uh, I think it's called the Freedom Forum out of Vanderbilt, where they uh, come together and talk about uh, particularly religion in the schools to try to deal with uh, how can we as a society uh, make a win-win situation here where people feel like their religious expression is not being stifled, but at the same time we're not imposing a religious expression on someone that doesn't particularly share that expression. Um, they've done an excellent job of, of uh, talk, setting up dialogue, talking about it, and bringing people of a variety of beliefs together from the Christian Coalition to the uh, Americans United for Separation of Church and State at the same table talking about it. And uh, I'm very encouraged by that sort of thing, and I think we can do that sort of thing here in Austin. And what would it look like for you? Um, How would Austin be different? Oh, okay, you're going to have to repeat the question. I'm sorry. How would Austin be different? Looking down the road, oh, mm -hmm. as a result of, of all this work we're doing now, mm -hmm. what will it look like a few years down the road? Well, I would only hope that I would see people shed their fear mm -hmm. of what is different, shed their fear and apprehension of what is foreign, and um, open up their hearts because there are, there are a lot of people out there that are wonderful people and you miss them if you don't become involved and if you don't open your heart and your head. That sounds like a plea for folks to get involved. We have a little bit more time. What would your plea then be to the Austin community? Wow. <laughs> There's so many things. Um, <laughs> I think I would like to see people really just find one thing, if they could, to get involved in. There are so many things that need to be done. Uh, there are some people out there who are trying to do a lot of them and putting their fingers in the dike. Um, but if everybody could find just one thing that they could get passionate about, that they could feel good about, that they could share from themselves, uh, I think that would make a tremendous difference. And certainly then I can see the possibilities of how we can work with each other across faith boundaries, across racial boundaries, in all kinds of ways to work on some of these problems, right? Well, I hope lots of people then show up for the dialogue sessions, for the symposium whenever it happens, mm -hmm. and that the place is packed this next year when we do our annual Thanksgiving service, that the 16th annual by now. right? Mm -hmm. So again, folks can call Austin Metropolitan Ministries, right? That's and right. And find out when and where all of this is happening. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Donna and Kathy. Thank it's you. been good to have you, and uh, we'll look forward to visiting with you again a few years down the road. And thank Thanks. you for joining us today on Austin Faith Dialogue. We'll see you here again next week. Thank you.